Well, new variant, new cases, and new laws. The new Omicron variant. Government is now suspending all flights. And scientists say the new variant is spreading twice as quickly as Delta. If you haven't heard, Omicron is the new COVID variant, and it's been plastered all over the news 24-7. There are three main things I think about when new variants come about. How easy do they spread? How deadly are they? And will our vaccines still work? And in this video, we'll cover all of those with the latest information as of the 1st of December, 2021. It was first detected in South Africa, but I think it's important to say that their genetic sequencing system is one of the best in the world. So it doesn't necessarily mean that it originated there. They were just one of the first to notice it. Since then, dozens, probably more other countries have reported cases in their country and that's including the UK, we've had four or five cases already. The other thing to mention is that it has 50 mutations that are new, 30 of which are on the spike protein. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that more mutations means worse outcomes or a more dangerous virus. These are just unknowns, and I think about 26 of these mutations have never been seen before, so we just have no clue how they will pan out in the real world. Now, the reason the spike protein is important is if we have a look at the COVID virus, this isn't the COVID virus, this is a kid's toy, suspended disbelief, just work with me on this one. If this is the spike protein, it helps get into the cell. So if it attaches onto the cell, opens the cell up, it acts almost like a key to get in. The majority of our vaccines have been working on the spike protein and also our own immunity, natural immunity, when we come into contact with the virus will be antibodies against the spike protein. So the key really is the spike protein. Now, if you have, and I've got a whole set of toys here for this demonstration, if you have a new variant where the spike protein is significantly different or is changed in a way where it can work in a slightly different way, and say it attaches in a quicker way, opens up the cell in a more rapid way, then it could transmit more quickly. The key part also is that if the spike protein is significantly different, then our own immunity may not work as well against it, and our vaccines may not work as well against it, and therefore the variant may be able to evade our immune system. If we look at what's happened with COVID-19 so far, we had the alpha variants that became dominant in the UK and it was different to the original variant from China. What we saw, it was also more transmissible and it quickly became the dominant variant there. And then we also saw the Delta variant more recently. And if you wanted to find out more about it, I've done a video on it, so please have a look at that. And again, the Delta variant was more transmissible than the alpha variant and it became the dominant variant. So when we look at South Africa, we are seeing a surge of cases at the moment and a surge of hospitalization. How much is that due to the new variant? I think time will only tell. What is gonna be important is real life data, hospitalization rates, numbers of infections, those kind of things will be key for us to understand if it is more transmissible. Transmissible? Transmissible over transmissible, I think we'll go for. Uh, it's getting late. Slightly mixed messages on this one, unfortunately. On the one hand, as I mentioned, the cases are on the rise in South Africa. On the other hand, I'm hearing speculation that uh, the severity of it is milder compared to other variants. Some, some of the symptoms are slightly different. I think this early in a new variant, it's very difficult to make assumptions and to extrapolate it to the rest of the population. I mean, one of the things we know, WHO has said, the majority of those infected initially have been younger people, so university students, those kind of things. In general, with COVID-19, they will have milder symptoms. So what we really need to know is how it affects other age groups and other people in the community, people with comorbidities and other illnesses, I think is also very important to know. So even if it turns out that it's as deadly as the Delta variant or less so, there are still two other factors that come into play. How transmissible it is and also how many breakthrough infections there will be in the vaccinated population or those who have immunity. The reason is that even if it's not deadly, if it still hospitalizes you, then there can be a significant strain on the system, on the healthcare system of a country. Think of it this way. If we've had a massive surge of this new variant and people in hospital taking up beds, not maybe necessarily dying, 
a lot of other people may not get the care that they deserve or that they should receive. And if we look back at the lockdowns that we've had, the whole point has been to protect the hospitals, to allow healthcare staff to still treat patients and be able to do the job that they're doing. If we overload the system, then a lot more people are likely to die. Time again will tell, and what we need is real world data to show what hospitalization rates are, death rates are, and that will probably take weeks to months. WHO have said that early data indicates that people who've had COVID-19 before are at a higher risk of getting reinfection, which I guess brings a little bit of doubt about our immune system and also brings a bit of doubt about vaccinated immunity. Now, we don't have enough data to comment on that. And what we've seen in previous variants is that maybe the effectiveness of the vaccine is slightly reduced, but the important part is how will the hospitalization rate or death rates be affected? Because if the vaccine can still provide very good protection for being in hospital or dying, then it will still be very, very effective and worth taking. Will there be a time where the vaccine is completely redundant and useless? Well, I mean, it's a small possibility. It could be at the moment we don't know enough about this variant and it could completely overrun our vaccines and they could be useless. But I think it's a smaller possibility. I think the more likely thing is what we've seen before, which is that vaccine effectiveness may drop a little bit, but actual protection from hospitalization will be very, very good. The other thing to say is that a lot of these companies, especially the mRNA companies, Pfizer and Moderna, and I did a video about how their vaccines work, so you can have a look at it if you want, but basically they are gonna be working on doing a booster vaccine. What they'll look at is the genetics of this variant and make a booster vaccine specific for this one. I think we're probably moving towards a time where they're gonna be like the flu vaccine, a booster vaccine that gets your immunity up. Whether that's the right or wrong thing, time will tell, I don't know, is the honest answer. And how quick will that be? Well, it's gonna be slow because they'll have to go through some trials. And I think the early talk has been that it won't be until March 2022 before they can start those trials. So it was a lot slower than I expected it to be, to be fair. <laughs> it's gonna be difficult to accept this, but variants are gonna be a part of our life. This is AC after COVID. Life before COVID BC was very, very different. And as much as I would love to go to the days of cruise ships and buffets and not really caring about viruses. Life is slightly more different now. I really do think that vaccines will be key for us in being able to get out of this pandemic, but also our own personal human behaviors, wearing masks, washing our hands, doing things that, you know, help reduce the risk of transmission. Like in the last couple of months in the UK, restrictions for wearing a mask on the tube or the trains had completely gone away, but it just felt a bit odd to be in the middle of a pandemic for me, to still be on a train with lots of people and not wear a mask. I think some of these things can be slightly more people making sensible decisions about the world they live in now. I appreciate we've still got lots of question marks and the truth is we're at a very early stage, so it only time will tell. As soon as I find out more information, I will make a follow-up video for you. If you want that video to come to you, then please hit the subscribe, please hit the bell, hit the like, and just smash some buttons if you can. The other thing I have to say is be careful of misinformation in the comments and around YouTube at the moment. If you wanted to see a debunking video of some common conspiracy theories and myths, that'll be next. You've been fantastic. I've been Dr. Khalid. Peace.